This episode is sponsored by Adam and Eve Sex Store. It's adamandeve.com. Use code REAL for 50% off one item plus free shipping in the U.S. and Canada. Some exclusions apply. Get y'all some vibrators. I like the rose, just saying. <laughs> Period. Okay. Hey, you guys. It's your girl, Megan James, and you are now tuned into the Hollywood Group Chat Podcast. Period. Today, we have a co-host by the name of Alex Jackson. Alex Jackson, you can find me on Instagram at Alex, the media girl, girl with a U. And we have a special guest today. Everybody know who she is, my girl Hazel E. What's poppin', everyone? It's Hazel E, baby. Okay, so Hazel, thank you for coming. Yes, I see you came you. all the way from Vegas to LA for the Hollywood Group Chat Podcast, period. Yeah, period. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? They don't, they don't really know our history of why mm -hmm. I would get on a flight to come for support me. you. You know what I'm saying? You and guys, Hazel has been in my life for a really long time. Like, she literally, she's kind of like the first person that kind of introduced me into the entertainment game. Like, she made the call for me to get on Bad Girls Club. She introduced me to, like, one of my first friends. Um, I met Soldier Boy and Jabbar through Hazel. She put Pharrell. me in my first music video. Oh, I met Pharrell through Hazel. Yeah, for the cream liquor launch we had right. to go to. Model. And then she um, put me in my first music video, and then I became a video hoe after that for a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, but she really put, like, she put me, my first like foot in the door in the entertainment game, so I gotta say thank That's you for that. That's what a big sis does. Period. You feel me? Yeah. I didn't even know that. Yeah, I didn't mm -hmm. know that. She did. I've been doing Hazel for a really, really long time. Yeah. When I used to work at Scott's, girl, I, I was dancing on tables. I and I was like, girl. and I was like, she bad, and I was like, what you trying to do? She like, I'm gonna do entertainment and everything. I was like, bet. So what we gonna do is come do this music video, and then from there we just and I started putting like, her position. Yeah, a couple months after that, I was like, I want to be on Bad Girls Club, and she made the call. We literally was watching your season, Me and Miracle, the other night. <laughs> Why, bitch? <laughs> Y'all be bored. <laughs> Bitches be so bored. Oh, my God. Anyway, we're not going to talk about that. <laughs> it's one of the most iconic seasons in history. Anyway. Right? Okay, you guys. So, I like to start off all my guests with an icebreaker game. We really don't need that because we know each other, but we're going to do it anyway. Mm -hmm. okay, well, I don't so, know her that well, so. Yeah. yeah. So, maybe you should ask the this or that question. Okay. This or that. Wait, wait, wait. We got to tell them. Okay, so okay. we're going to start Hazel off with the icebreaker game. It's called This or That, where mm -hmm. she picks this or that. This is the game that I always use when I go on dates with niggas <laughs> because I be needing to know where they mind be at. Oh, Lord. Okay. I be needing to know if it's this or that, this or that. Like, Bernice or Jennifer Lopez. Oh, okay. So like, I be wanting to know. Even compare the two. Head or tail. Like, I be <laughs> wanting to know. Titties or ass. Okay. <laughs> we don't let Mercedes take. Oh, never mind. Her name is Alex. I'm sorry, you guys. I know her as something else, but I'm going to let y'all call her Alex. We're going to let Alex take the mic on the this or that game. Okay. So, first on the this or that, De Leon or Duce? De Leon. Okay. Houston or Atlanta? Houston. Marriage boot camp or love and hip hop? Oh, come on now. <laughs> this or that now, girl. Come on now. This or that. Okay, in what terms? Watching it or being on it? I would say being on it. Like the experience. Yeah, the experience. The experience. God. Uh, that one's so hard because one paid me really well and treated me really good. Marriage boot camp? Right. <laughs> I was just about to say that. I was, I was, I was just on there. <laughs> Oh, but one ba ma but one made me into who I am today. So I will say love and hip hop. Okay. Yeah. Money mm -hmm. or fame? Money. Masika or Devon? <laughs> <laughs> okay, look. I it, plead the fifth. <laughs> <laughs> okay, <Kelsey. laughs> I'm I screaming. I'm screaming. Mm -hmm. Okay. So now we're going to get into the tea and the juice and the spill. Um, the first segment is our guest introduction. So you can introduce yourself. Let us know, like, how you got into the entertainment game. You know, let us, let us know something about Hazel E that most people wouldn't know. Okay. So what's up, everyone? It's your girl, Hazel E, baby. Um, things that you guys might not know about me, how I got in the game. Okay, first of all, I grew up in Texas. I pledged Alpha Kappa Alpha. I didn't know you was AK. I did. Oh. You did? Yeah. yeah. Oh, uh, let me not throw up no pinky. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> My bad. I have uh, a bad I'm experience. I'm a sorority girl. I'm a college graduate, bachelor's in mass communication, TV broadcasting. I started off in this industry. Actually, before I became a publicist, I doubled for Raven Simone. Um, on the Disney Channel. So that was like my first little foot into the Hollywood door um, was being uh, Raven's double on Disney Channel. And then as I was doing that, I became an intern um, into being a publicist. Um, my first campaign was Gnarls Barkley. We took them, we got a Grammy. Um, shout out Echo Haddix, because that's who put me on in the PR game. 
And so, yeah, I was like making other people famous before I could put myself in position. I mean, I had everybody. I had Young Hollywood on Smash, from Chloe to Megan Good, Melissa Ford, I mean, everything. And then in my, um, my career path of being a publicist, I did a party for Idris Elba um, up, in the, uh, up in the Hollywood Hills. And he was like, after that party, it was a huge success. Everybody came, the tr Jesse Torero, Megan Good. I mean, it was like when Young Hollywood was like at its peak. And he was like, hey, Zul, what would you like to be, you know, <laughs> outside, outside of this, you know, publicity game? And I was like, Driss, I want to be a rapper. I have the song Valley Girl, blah, blah, blah. And he's like, he put me in the studio and we did my first mixtape called Shoe Fetish. That video had Megan Good, the Valley Girl video. That was like my whole little 818 where I ride. Um, came in the mix and I, I just started getting myself from behind the cameras, like to in front of the camera. And then circa 2014, I put together this little cast in Hollywood and we got Love and Hip Hop. Yeah, Hollywood. I don't even know you like, you was court, court, like curated yeah. Like curated that. Love and Hip Hop. Yeah, I mean, it's one of those things where if I knew that I was like executive producing a show back then, I like I know better now, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? But when I met with um, Mona and Stephanie and they were like, so, you know, Game or Ray J? And I'm like, Ray J. Like, they're like, and this and that. And they're like, you know, um, you got to come on and be Tierra Marie's like friend. Like, we, you know, we need you because you're like kind of the glue. You got all the cast going on here. You kind of got everybody's storylines. And, um, as soon after I think I started filming, they're like, she's like, you're the breakout star. Like, you're not just about to be nobody's home girl. You're about to be Hazel E and you're gonna like stand on your own. And so that's really where... want, she really want to stand with you? Who, Tier? Uh -huh. I was actually, we actually had an apartment together okay, in okay, season okay. one and then I moved out in that iconic street scene and got yeah. my own place. And that was kind of like the first separation, mm -hmm. like division, because I felt like and I would tell Mona and them all the time, like, I can't film and be authentically myself because when we go home, we really fight. Like, we really was boxing in the house. Oh, we wow. get off set and then we going home and we really, in real life, fighting. And I was like, it's toxic. So that's when I, we orchestrated the move out scene. So then that way I could be authentically and speak my truth without having to take it home with me every day. So what's the worst and best part of being in the entertainment industry? Like in like 30 second, that's a 30 second part. clip. Um, Y'all, the wine is here. Woo! -hoo! Yes. Um, best part is the perks. The fuck? You know what I mean? <laughs> it's the perks. It's the red carpet. It's the life. It's you the, can hand it to me. It's okay. You can step into the scene. Yeah. It's the it's the places that you wouldn't normally get to go if you didn't have you know a name or the things you get. Um, the worst part is everybody in your business. There's no like private moments, even when you want them to be private. Sometimes they're not private. And also I feel like the other worst part, I'm writing my 30 seconds up, would be held to a higher standard than most. Mm -hmm. Like when you're on a platform, now people expect you to use your platform with purpose and sometimes you like, but bitch, I just want to black the fuck out and, and tell you how I feel, but right. then that comes with consequences. Mm -hmm. So just being held to a higher standard and having to live up to that and not be human sometimes. Yeah, that would get on my nerves. So, so you guys, we're going to take a liquor break real quick because everybody need a shot. We'll be right back. Okay, you guys. And we're back with our drinks. <laughs> okay, so um, we're going to move on to the TT. And the TT is a trending topic. Cute. Okay, so... Um, so I really want to talk about this Megan Thee Stallion and Tory Lanez trial because <sighs> all day, like I have stopped in my tracks every <laughs> update. Me too. I was even on the plane, like like what, like what's mm -hmm. going on? Trying to, to get the five dollar Wi Fi on Delta. Yeah, like, <laughs> bitch, I can't miss a beat. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so do you think Tory's gonna walk? Because I think he's gonna walk. I think it might be a mistrial. Mm. I hope that somebody takes accountability for shooting that girl. I just, I don't know, and I I just went back and rewatched the video again, and I just, just didn't like Kelsey's disposition, Tori's laying on that ground, it's like, one of y'all shot her. Like, I mean, I feel like at this point, we all came to the conclusion she was shot, it's just who did it? But at this point, it's giving Kelsey and Tori and cahoots. But They're you wanna know something hoops. though? Like, I'm really big on loyalty, like with my it's friends. It's pissing me off, bro. No, no, with my friends. Like, if I'm Kelsey and you're Megan, and I'm fucking Tori first, and you going behind my back fucking that nigga, we not friends. Who, Masika? 
sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how loud. Wait, wait. We, we were talking about the other M. We were talking about Megan. Sorry, okay, sorry, Megan. Okay, Megan. Is, sorry, got it. No, no. But what I said, <laughs> you know what? I, no, I need to know. Did, did Masika fuck one of your old men, old boos? That's how the whole season started with her snaking me and backdooring me with Young Berg. Like, oh yeah, I forgot. Mm -hmm. I forgot. I'm just saying, if, <laughs> if, a, if my friend fucked my nigga behind my back. And then I'm, why would I go to trial and stand up for you? No shade against Megan, though. Oh, so you're I saying I get what you're saying. She, like, but why? The truth, it's the truth, though. I'm still going to tell yeah, the truth. I'm still going to tell the truth. Now, it's given she got paid off. And if he did get her the million dollars, I, I, I'm a lot, too. I'm just going to say. Yeah, and yeah. nobody can Or no, you're going to plead the fifth. You're not going to lie. You're yeah, gonna I'm going to plead, plead the, the fifth. fifth, yeah. Yeah, going to plead the fifth for sure. Definitely, I don't recall and I don't remember a lot in there, I'm definitely doing that for that million. Like, mm -hmm. cause there ain't no more loyalty. We clearly not gonna be you friends. You fucked my nigga. We're not gonna be friends no more, you know? You fucked my nigga. It yeah. wasn't, no, after that, it was, the loyalty was done but after I that. But I don't think her, Megan sleeping with her, even though I would love to shoot a bitch that slept with my nigga, but I don't feel like that, like the, the crime, um, Ju the punishment doesn't justify like the crime. Yeah. Like you don't deserve to get shot. I didn't, I'm not saying she deserved to get shot. I'm saying that yeah. Kelsey don't owe Megan any loyalty to go on the stand. And like if I was Kelsey, I would have took the money too. Is what I'm saying because it's not mm -hmm. like Megan's my real friend. I mean, yeah, I understand mm -hmm. if it's money involved. Yeah. But if it wasn't money involved, I'm gonna just tell the truth. Just even if we we're not yeah. friends, I just want to free myself. Yeah. I'm like, just I would want to clear truth. my name because I'm sorry. At the end of the day, I just don't see how Kelsey gonna be able to walk around these streets when she done. I think she's going to be walking just fine around the street. Mm, I think too. so. I think so, too. Because, mm. like, I don't know what happened. Like, she couldn't walk around the streets after this trial had it been me that got shot. I'm telling you, she's not walking around them streets. You don't think so? She's not but walking around the streets. it's giving she that. Said, I promise if you. It was her. I said, if it's me, she's not walking around them streets. Oh. With your million dollars, because I promise you I'm going to have, is you not walking around them streets. She should not, no matter what happens, she should not. Like, the, her disloyalty on that stand is disgusting. Like, she's appalling. I don't care if she did it for money or whatever. She like, has selective amnesia. She, she's disgusting. Like, she's <laughs> Most a disgusting got human that. being. And it's like, that girl, I just, like I said, I just rewatched the video. Megan Stallion's out bleeding on the street. Grammy Award winning. You know what I'm saying? Like, she's been through so much. And it's like, y'all playing with that girl. And somebody uh, hurt her. And everybody's sitting around playing in the court of law. I hope the judge starts giving people perjury on the stand. I, I hope really they start throwing out some other charges. So these. Okay, we'll skip it. Please. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So, so, so since we're on the subject of love and hip hop, cast I'm not members, getting served on the Hollywood group chat. <laughs> I'm saying, how do you feel about Lil Fizz booty hole? Woo! I have searched for the. You know. I did not find it. I did not find it. I'm so upset. Like all I can see is the little clip because my thing is, at which angle did he shoot it from? Because all I can see is that first beginning little it's three seconds. Somebody else shot that. You I think so? Because I, I was like, was it was the camera right. underneath, and did he like sit down and wait? Do you squat? think it was him? Because he said it wasn't him. It's he him. Was, of course he not. It's gonna him. Say it was him. It's he him. No face, no case, bitch. They can't prove it. I was looking for. I couldn't find it on Twitter. I couldn't find. They had it. He's had it. He, he probably had to have it. I see. They it. said it's from his OnlyFans, though, right? And now he's trying to say that, like, which I mean, you know, my ex is on OnlyFans now, and from the things that I seen on like the Twitter feed about him. These guys are doing something strange for a little piece of change, and they thinking that nobody gonna find out um, because they getting paid for it. But people are leaking the, the the content for sure. They are. You talking about Devon on OnlyFans? He's now started a career on OnlyFans. Oh, because what was his career before that? Being my husband. <laughs> <laughs> I hate to see it. <laughs> <laughs> Not I hate to see it. <laughs> the money, he ran out of them funds. He ain't got the funds. Okay, so what made you fall in love with him anyways? Because, you know, I got a thing for young niggas. And Alex is always telling me I date too young. Mm -hmm. The youngest nigga I ever, like, slept with was probably, like... 20. 20. 19. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, young. my husband was 14 years younger than me, you know? Um, what, like, damn, that's I, a lot. I didn't know that. Yeah, I did. And I know he was that young. Yeah, he's fourteen years younger. He younger than me and you. I know. This one. He just, yeah, he's twenty eight. He he's twenty eight. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this um. I don't yeah. even know. So like how, like, how do you feel about that? I feel like. Well, okay. Let me start with this. Okay. I did see you on the blogs a couple weeks ago. Speak your piece about narcissism, mm -hmm. and it spoke to me because it felt like in that moment that you were speaking to me, mm -hmm. which is another reason why I agreed to come on here. I've been because through it. Clearly, mm -hmm. that's what it, it was like. You were saying something that was like, 
wow, she just opened my eyes even more. So now once you can understand what being with a narcissist is, you can understand how I fell. Mm -hmm. Because at that moment when you're getting love bombed and you're getting all those things that like, this is too good to be true. Well, yeah, it actually it is. is. <laughs> but you don't know that when you're getting in it. And it's like, I'm, I'm almost 40 years old at the time. You know, I'm like, okay, you know what I'm saying? I ain't getting no younger bitch. I need to get a man, a, yeah. a ring. I want to get married. I need to have a baby. Like, you start running down that that checklist of things that you're trying to, like, achieve, right? And when somebody comes in and, and starts trying to be all those things that you, like, that you want or need at the time, it's, like, easy to go quick. And, and in the beginning of the relationship, right, when we put it on social media, I got called for marriage boot camp. Mm. So we were so very fresh when we went on the show. And when we got in that house and we spent, you've done it, 20, 28, almost a month together in the house it's every two day. Weeks. Huh? Ours was two weeks. Oh, we did three weeks. We oh. did 21 days. Oh, okay. I, but, you know, we had a bigger cast than they normally mm -hmm. have. So we did three weeks, 21 days in there, all day, every day. And at that, when I got into the house, I already kind of had beef with people. So I felt like he had my back. So that made us even, like, closer. closer. But then when that lie detector test, because I kept fearing, like, there's no way this young I feel like that fucking lie detector test is rigged. And that motherfucking And that's when he convinced shit. me. That's Them when he convinced not, me. It's rigged. He convinced me. I believe And him. other I'm production sorry. convinced me. That is such a big thing. They convinced me that the lie detector test was not real and that it was for more shock value. It is. For in my opinion, TV. allegedly. So what was on the, what, what he I, My question was, are you using me for my fame? He said, I asked the nigga I was with to the same thing. And he said, no. And it came back a motherfucking lie. Mine too. But I honestly and think then I he still, was using you for your fame uh, Well, exactly. So, but in that moment and afterwards, I'm like, I'm done, I'm done, I'm done. And then they're like, no, it's whatever. And I don't know if that's so I can accept the ring at the ring ceremony, because I did accept the ring. That's I gave him a contract, though, at the ring ceremony, which is why I made the greatest ring ceremony of all time. But I gave him a contract, because I wanted things to be my terms. So I'm like, motherfucker, if, if you using me, then whatever you get, I'm getting a percentage of if you decide to leave me after you get on. You know what I'm saying? Right. And it went from that to an actual real proposal. And I felt like he just fell in love with, like, you're just like some regular guy in Houston. You might be cute, you have bitches to, now you're on a A-list. He skin. Huh? You, you're, on a, you're on a top list production show. You're getting thrown first class to LA. You're around other stuff you've never done before. Yeah. Of course you're in love with me, or you're not even in love with me. Okay, you're so I have a question. You're in idea of me, yeah. which means that you're feeding me. Did he try to poison you, or did you accidentally drink the water? Okay, so this is how I feel. Like I said in the, pois the post about the poison, I said, I want to believe he didn't poison no, me. No, I saw that. You said you want to believe that he did, did not. Because it'll make me feel better. But in actuality, it was like, this your drink. Right, that's your drink. You go walk away from your drink because you got to go to the bathroom. Mm -hmm. Somebody puts bleach, a cleaning solution in your drink, in your, your, your drink. You come, they, you say, I'm outside in my backyard in Las Vegas. It's hot as fuck. It's 100 some degrees in August. We were actually waiting for the Amazon grocery delivery to come, and I was like lacking drink, like waters, like I'm waiting for the groceries. I'm about to go in the house, I'm about to go drink. I go back to the drink that I have. I don't smell. Did somebody do something? I'm in my house, bro. Yeah. I'm in my I'm house. Not thinking none of it. Why I gotta smell my drink? Like, what are we not in the club? First of all, why the fuck would he put it in a water bottle? Hello, why? He like, who does that? He didn't rip the label off and say, now this is a cleaning solution or this is tainted. So I go back in and I just drink the water. Of course, it immediately hits my throat and I gag and I start foaming at the mouth and I'm throwing up. My whole thing is I have a two-year-old daughter who takes and drinks water bottles from anybody's water bottle all day long. What if she would have picked the water bottle up instead of me? She might not have survived because I fought. Through, through that bleach going down my throat. And then he, I'm gagging and my sister and him come in the room and my sister's like, what, what did you drink? And I'm pointing back at the water bottle. He looks at her and goes, oh yeah, I put bleach, I put the cleaning solution in there so I could make for the air, the, the diffuser or whatever. So then I'm about to put it on Instagram that Wait, I just pause drank. pause really quick. Hey, your camera's switching, right? Okay, cool. So, so then I'm gagging, I'm throwing up there, the text messages to my family and stuff. That's why you see the, like, get her to the hospital, like she drank bleach, whatever. Then I say, I'm about to put on social media, like, have you ever drank bleach? It hurts. And he's like, no, don't tell anybody about this. People are going to think said. that I poisoned you. Oh, okay. okay. That's why they, I have lack of, when he said on the shade room, when, or when I saw on the blogs, he said, you, he didn't say he didn't do it. He just said I didn't have no proof that he did it. 
That's all he said. That's was, giving narcissism. It's a narcissist. That's called and, gaslighting. It is gaslighting. And my situa thing was, if he didn't intentionally do it, like I don't want to believe that we just got a life insurance policy. He even bragged about the life insurance policy. Like I don't want to believe that he tried to poison me. I want to believe that he was just being an airhead and mix this in my water bottle and I just happened to drink drink it. That's what I want to believe. Did you want to believe it because you was like still wanted, like was in love and wanted this relationship? I just don't want to believe that my daughter's dad tried to poison me. Mm -hmm. That doesn't, it's not a good, it's not a good feeling to think that somebody that you do so much for and take care of could actually really want to like hurt, hurt you. you in that way. Like you would almost, you would, you want to, not even me, like, cause I would be dead, but she would do that to your daughter. You would take her mother. You know what I'm saying? So that's not like an easy pill to swallow. But you also mention a, abuse allegations as well. Mm -hmm. So if he had abused you, why not think that he wouldn't poison you? If you've ever been in an abusive relationship, that is abuse seems so temporary, right? Mm -hmm. Because it, abuse is a physical abuse is almost easier to digest than mental abuse. I agree. Because mental abuse, you keep playing it in your head. Mm -hmm. The physical abuse, you get over with it. So you think that with physical abuse is in the heat of the moment. Mm -hmm. You're reacting and stuff like that. So you don't think that like he's intentionally inflicting pain on you. It's just out of an emotion of anger at the moment. So I don't uh, correlate physical abuse with the him putting bleach in my water. I, I don't want to, like I'm still, I'm in the middle of this right now. It's not, this ain't an old topic, it's a new topic. I mm -hmm. just filed for divorce, so I'm still trying to process how this human being has done all of this to me and how do I move forward mm -hmm. in life with anyone? Cause like, what the fuck? <laughs> you know? Mm -hmm. no, I, I, so, I mean, I'm not saying he didn't poison me. That's why I put it on social media that day, because I had a dream about it. And I was like, I woke up like, I'm trying to process this day, because I haven't gotten over it yet. When motherfuckers know how real it is. I really hope the jury, like, if everybody, clearly she's paid. She's paid off. Clearly. But it has clear to be. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But like mental abuse is like you keep pl replaying that shit over and over because it's like, oh, am I really crazy? Am I really fat? Am I really stupid? Am I not good enough? That like, am I really a hoe? Am yeah. I really a bitch? Am I am I doing? Is these it my things? fault? Am I the problem? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Am I not being sexual enough? That's why he's cheating Does with my other pussy women. Suck. Well, I only been in one relationship since I've been. Oh, I've been in, I've been with a couple of narcissists. Yeah, like. African, <laughs> my ex girl, he used to like, he used to be so mean to me. Like we would literally have sex, right? And then um, like we would, like he would come and then he would complain. And mm. I'm like, nigga, you just came. Like, why are you complaining? Yeah, like why? Like, and then um, another thing that narcissists do, like they withhold sex. So like you'll be horny as fuck and they don't want to fuck you. Like, yeah, see, mine, you mine never had with sex. <laughs> mine says I didn't get, I, mine, mine's excuse was I was not sexual enough. But if you asked him the reason why he married me was because I didn't give it up on the first day. Like it was my, my it was my <laughs> modesty that made him my say that I was completely different than every other girl that he's ever met in, in the world. Like, but then you're, you're saying that, but then you're complaining that I'm not sexual enough. Nigga, I'm a new mom. I'm up with Ava 14, 16 Not to hours mention, a day. like I'm almost 40, like. And you 23, like, <laughs> you know them young ones, they yeah. be ready they to They sex drive, it's like, different. He, he, yeah, he was always with it, and I'm like, nigga, why you over here worried about getting your nap? I'm, worried, I'm already about paying these bills. Yeah, because you ain't got no job. Exactly. <laughs> so all I want is some head and to go to sleep. Right. <laughs> like, shit. I reverse, nigga. I just want some head to go to bed. Like, nigga, what? I'm screaming. Okay. So, mm -hmm. Hazel, we've seen in the media that you've had a lot of plastic surgery. And I've had a lot of plastic surgery, too. And I've had surgery, too. Y yeah. Okay. But, like, do you feel that you have body dysmorphia? Like, do you look at yourself and you're like, okay, I can fix this. And then you go get it fixed. And then you're like, okay, well, I can fix this, too. Let me go back. Is like, that the definition of body dysmorphia? I, I feel like it is. Hold on, I'm going to Google it, so I want nobody to be clowning me. Googly. I say Googly. Googly. <laughs> but if that's the definition of body dysmorphia, like, then I, I definitely I feel like have you it. always <laughs> feel like something's wrong with you. I think I, that's the definition. Okay, well, then if that's the case, then I have body dysmorphia for sure because I feel like... Um, it's, a, it's a mental 
illness involving obsessive yep. focus on a perceived flaw, flaw in, in appearance. appearance. Okay, no, then I don't have it because I'm not obsessed obsessive on anything. I feel like we live in a day and age where there is modern medicine and modern procedures to correct things if you don't like them. If you don't like your flat ass, go get a bigger one. If you don't like your your saggy titties, go get them lifted. If you don't like your big ass nose, go get it smaller. And what the fuck is wrong but with it? But I feel it? like plastic surgery does become obsessive because after okay. I got it the first time, I was like, damn, I look good. What else is wrong with me? I got something else. I was mm -hmm. like, well, shit. What else is wrong? You start, I feel like you do start to get obsessed with looking perfect. What? Okay, and that's also because we've been on TV. True. And, and not you so much, but for me, the world picked me apart, like, down to my edges. Like, oh, her nose is too big. Her her body is shaped like a lot. Like, I would get dragged on social media. Girl, I be getting media. dragged. Yeah. Uh, girl, they be talking about how beautiful your face is. Like, you're flawless. Girl, like, I, I, would get, I, I also get to be dragged. They get crimson chin. Crimson chin. <laughs> blackhead. <laughs> Jimmy Newton. I just you're so gorgeous. I've always thought you. From the moment I met you, I couldn't imagine people saying oh, anything about you. Oh, handsome Squidward. <laughs> oh, I couldn't imagine anybody saying anything about you because I personally think you're like Thank you. gorgeous. Just, you know, the day I met you, y'all gorgeous. Like, no, she and, cute, but I think. <laughs> but she, but no, because she thinks she has body dysmorphia because she always trying to fix it. I'm like, girl, your body small, your stomach yeah, flat. Yeah. And she's like, no, I need to lose this. I need to lose this. <laughs> well, no, but it's also because we live under the pressure of Hollywood. So, yeah, if we, our job was not to be in front of a camera and we literally make money based on how we look. you First of all, you can't go on TV, a reality TV show. If bitches don't want to look like you, be you, or live your life, then there, there's no point for you to be there. There's no point for you to be there. We're damn near desired Barbie dolls, or we live these exoner, like exoner, I don't even know the fucking word I'm trying to say. <laughs> <laughs> it was like, it, it's not exonerated. Not exonerated, bitch. <laughs> that means that. Right, I know, I know it's not. <laughs> These over the top, <laughs> we'll go good, there. Good it's the Patron, my, my vocabulary <laughs> slipping right now. Y'all see me slipping. Um, but yeah, like we are like girls and women that people look up to, and so, yeah, we're trying to keep up with the fucking Kardashians. We like, okay, bitch, I know Chloe just went in. Got yeah, a woo, sleeve. Woo, 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 woo. And, and now I'm finna go try to see what procedure she got because I want to lose this stomach I can't do that I've been working at the gym for forever. Like, you know what I'm saying? And so I feel like that's just a part of us trying to be, be that bitch, like, and have... The fan base and have people. The niggas, don't forget about the niggas. The niggas, yeah. the brand deals. Like, bitch, I'm like, what do I got to do to become a Savage Fenty ambassador, Rihanna? Girl, like, me what too. the fuck? Like, but at this point, they being all inclusive. I mean, Lil Nail got a Savage Fenty deal. I mean, they might not be the paying. big comedian. The big girl. Oh, well, yeah, yeah, they're being all included. That's what I'm saying. But it's like, like what, like what, like what do you have to do to like? Like, what makes us included? Include? Yeah, like why are we not? <laughs> why am I not included? Like, bitch, like, why am I not included? But so I think it's like. You know, if that's the definition of body dysmorphia, I don't feel like I'm obsessed with anything, but I am obsessed with being the best me that I can be. Now, due to my recent plastic surgery failures, mm -hmm. like I want my titties back. Like I lost my boobs in a plastic surgery. My implants Girl, didn't work didn't work wrong. My titties is out. And so now I'm lo living with natural, real breasts, and I'm like they little, and I know my body would get that. Curve, boom, 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 I got him back, but I got a daughter. But I got a, but I got a, but I got a, but I got a daughter, so I can't risk me going back under the knife for being vain and leaving my child. So that's what has stopped me now. Had I not had Ava, I would already got my titties back. So I know you had surgery to get your, uh, you had what? You want make over? Uh, no. Oh, uterus, my fibroid. Uh, yeah. And I know that can cause bloating in the stomach yeah. and make you look bigger and all this other stuff. Whatever yeah. I was researching it. So do you, now that you've had this surgery, do you think you can just naturally work out and get Oh, absolutely. It? See, when I was going to get the mommy makeovers, doing the tummy tuck, that's when I found out like, no, you really have uterine fibroids. And no matter how we try to do your tummy tuck, you still gonna have a bulge because you have tumors mm -hmm. in your uterus. Yeah. So after I healed from the tummy tucks, like got to a point a year and a half later, then it was like, let me go and address the real issue, which is the fibroids. That's what makes it hard for me to, I can get pregnant, but I can't hold a baby mm -hmm. because the baby ain't got no room to grow because it was like stuck yeah. and lodged in between tumors. So now that I went and had that procedure, now I'm just like on health. Like I have, I have no fake body parts in me except for the fillers in my face and the Botox in my forehead. 
and now I'm just gonna, you know what I'm saying? Like, I got my own fat in my ass, mm -hmm. and it's like, I'm period, and that's just how I'm gonna live from, from here on out, and work out, and try to, I got a daughter. Things yeah. are like different. I fumbled, like I fumbled with the plastic surgery and almost lost my life and could have left my child for trying to Be keep fine. up with the, 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 the younger girls from my younger husband. And uh, wait, yeah. So he was a cheater too. Yes, girl. Where have you been, you girl? I just been under the rocks, <laughs> <laughs> bitch. Speaking of him cheating, the girl from Cartel Crew, what Danya, Danya. Right. What's her name? How do we say it? Danyana, Danya, whatever. She from Cartel Crew. Mm -hmm. What made you? Cause you put out text messages between him and other women, mm -hmm. but what made you put her on blast on social media? Okay, she was probably disrespectful. Yeah, she was disrespectful. So I put other text messages on blast. First of all, um, Di is her name Diana? Is it Danita? It's that Dan Dan It's D A Y A N A. Is it, Dan is it Dana. Dana. Dana? Dana. Dana. No, it might be Diana. Diana. It don't matter. <laughs> What's her name? <laughs> okay, <laughs> Dana. Diana. It's something like that. So she has. She's one of the girls that has been hitting my husband consistently when we were married. Mm -hmm. So when I was in Aruba, when I had fled or whatever, because I had to get me and my daughter to a safe place, he was like, that's why I'm finna go to Miami, blah, 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 and was like popping big shit. And I was like, the only bitch he be talking to in Miami this whole time we married was a bitch from the cartel crew. Mm -hmm. And she, you know, Davon would always lose his pages, all that stuff, and she'd always hit him on a new page, a new page. Like she was always so checking in with him. Content. She was always, and I'd always block her because I had all his Instagram, I had all his socials on my phone, because he'd always get caught up. So I already knew where he was going to like run to. And for me, it's like, you saving this nigga. Like, you made it to where instead of me coming back from Aruba and he had to like face the music, he got to like run to another bitch. Mm -hmm. And it was like, fine, but they were taunting me off social media. And then the day that she got Like the cartels? Huh? No, she no. from the Cartel Crew, well, yeah. the show. She, she said they years. were taunting her off social well, media. Well, no, she did two years in the feds, and her husband is still, she's married with four kids, and her husband's still locked up. And so, so what she want your man for? Focus. And he broke. I, she, she told me, because <laughs> what no one knows is that she ended up calling me, and she ended up copping a plea and saying, how did I put up with him for three years? Oh. And she put him out in, like, less than a week. And Shut I have up. all her messages, yeah, recordings. Like, she definitely apologized to me. Renee Graziano, my fairy mob mother. I love Renee. Yeah. Oh, um, she's sweet. Had her, like, she wanted to reach out to me, and she's like, I can't put up with him. And I said, not the mistress trying to cop the plea with the wife, because you can't handle him. And I was like, you got him. You do what you want with him. And so she sent him back to his mama. But um, what made me put her <laughs> on blast was the day that she decided to get bold and posted him on her page laying in her bed. Mm. And then the flexing that he was but doing. But it's just like, why and then you she flex went, with this nigga? And then why she went, is y'all flexing and arguing over broke niggas? And then she, confused well, me. he was my husband. And I, mean, my I mean, not true. I was like, he's my child's father. Like, like, no, like, I'm talking about her like, girl. And then she went live with him in the car. And I just felt like, wow, like, bitch, Real disres like you're disrespectful as fuck. Like, and guess what? Instead of like me he holding this because I refuse, like you know, one thing of narcissists, they love you to be silent. Like he would always say, like I can torture you. You're my wife. Like he would love to do the the abuse, like to where I'm mentally fucked, and then we go back out in public and we hold hands, and he acts like the most loving, caring guy. Yeah, because guy he wants people on the outside to think that everything's okay. Right. Mm -hmm. And so this they is hate all public humiliation. And so this is all a part of breaking my silence. Cause how this started was he was trying to paint it out to like I was cheating on him and having an affair. And there's still been no proof because it's it's his way of deflecting and projecting what yeah, he's doing on me, I've learned. But yeah, I just felt like the bitch is disrespectful. So if you want to get disrespectful, you're gonna have to deal with the nation of Hazel Baby because the nation goes hard and they ran them off social media, they blocked their pages, they deleted stuff, she called my phone, copped a plea and all that because now bitch you being a home wrecker. Not to say the home wasn't already wrecked, but like you, you worse, but bitch. you like you like save this nigga. Like what if I was like at the time trying to serve him or whatever, divorce papers or something, and you over here hiding him in your fucking shit and I can't I can't serve this nigga divorce papers because you you hide hide them out. You just like, had to find her address. Well, I did, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> like, to talk about finding people's addresses. <laughs> I did. And so yeah, but 
I mean, like I said, she was over it, and um, she sent him back to the street. So, yeah. I mm. just want to know, because <laughs> this is not your first broke nigga you and fuck with. Uh -huh. The Rose Burgundy boy <laughs> was broke, too. Shut <laughs> <laughs> And <laughs> passion is over the quarter. Passion, is, passion has to. Passion is over the quarter now at this point. On I this mean, Rose Burgundy I'm just saying. She ran into Rose Burgundy last night and told him to what passion? <laughs> get Be away! That. Get I'm away! I'm just so confused because uh -huh. now I personally, this is my opinion, mm -hmm. and you know people think I'm other things, but I feel like 90% of men cheat. Okay. Me too. 99. Yeah. I say 90. I say I feel like 90% men cheat. Mm -hmm. But if, I'm go if I already feel like every nigga cheat, why would I be with a broke one? Okay. So I don't understand, like, mm -hmm. why do you went to broke mm -hmm. to another brokey and okay. they both was like, <laughs> I can, hella young. Like, can, I, can I try to explain without, like, you explain it? Okay. I be feeling like people just want to, like, okay, Hazel got her shit together. She has money. She's been on TV. Her career's fine. Like, like, she don't need money. She want to be loved. I understand that, Bingo. but why not at least be with somebody on the same playing field? You said Sometimes, he couldn't even afford a wedding some, ring. Some, <laughs> he definitely did. <laughs> yeah. Shout out Jimmy Boy. <laughs> um, he definitely didn't. Uh, but why not go? Okay, so when you date men of your level or higher up, they run you like it's on they go it's on they time it's on what they want to do they're cheating they're louder about it the disrespect is even louder i did that already with the rich nigga the older nigga so i was like you know what fuck oh, yeah. this well, i'm gonna take the power that. back to me yeah and i'm gonna have these niggas doing what the fuck i want yeah i want my feet rubbed i want my meals cooked i want my kitchen cleaned i turned i probably turned you was in the rich nigga I Period. <laughs> I did that. And I tried that and I tried it twice. And so now, you know, I digress and I will go back to, you know, I'm, I'm obsessed with saying in my next relationship, I need gender roles. And I'm I looking forward to going back to being the woman. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm my little phase of being the man and grabbing my nuts is, is over with. Are you dating? I have not been on a date I yet. I would say Dame is fresh as hell. Let that nigga been cheating the whole relationship, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but let her heal first. I have Women, not. Women, we heal first before we move on. Not niggas. Me. Yeah, you don't. But <laughs> niggas. You're an Aquarius, right? Mm-hmm. You Megan and Megan. Megan and Megan, Megan is the stallion, the Megan the James, the Megan is the Aquarius. <laughs> Niggas, they don't heal. They just go to the next beach, next beach, bring mm -hmm. every baggage in every relationship. But most mm -hmm. women, especially like an older woman, no shade, yeah. but you know, a mama, married, going through a divorce, they heal first before they move on to the I'm talking place. to people though. Like the day that I announced my divorce, my DMs were popping. Like they were- Anybody they we know? Like, of course. Ooh. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Don't let the okay. internet fool you, child. <laughs> Don't let the internet fool you. I was surprised, like, I wow, know. like, okay. It, it gave me, like, you know, it gave me that confidence to show, like, my world's not ending, and I have good conversations with really dope men. Rich. Rich. They're definitely <laughs> all rich. They definitely Ooh, all. We love to see it. Uh, they <laughs> all <laughs> definitely have. Yeah, they all have more than I have. And um, and so when I do s decide to actually, like, go on a date, which is, like, awkward. But, um, you know, I'm not going to, like, not do it. Like, I'm going to I'm gonna do it. I even going to need a stepdaddy soon because the one she got, like, good luck. He not, he not paying no bills. <laughs> My question, do you think he gonna fail for alimony? I got him to sign a post nup. Oh, okay. And okay. Um, because after I found so out he, he was broke cheating. and he done. <laughs> <laughs> you haven't read the messages? Can you actually decipher what he says? <laughs> Dumb is the first thing. He used to love to call women airheads, and I'd be like, but you're the airhead. Like, you're literally, like, he's projection at its finest. So, yeah, after he got caught DMing the bitches and allegedly whatever, so I was gonna get the, the marriage annulled and, um, and, and for me not getting the marriage annulled, my mother had him, shout Angela Nettles, I am mommy one out in Houston, <laughs> had drew up a, a very good postnuptial agreement to where he waived every single right to, and if he gets to leave out the marriage of which he came with, 
Nothing. We're just some probably some bands. But I let him keep the rig on. Get your PlayStation and get it off. He didn't even get the PlayStation. I got the PlayStation. But I did let him. I did let him. Um, you know, take some of the designer luxury items and Cartier and you know things that he had. I do have a stuff going up on the real, real, not the things I threw away. But yeah, he he he. I feel like he came out on top because nigga had four hundred credit score in the marriage. Now he got like a seven fifty because I you know up to I got up to his credits. I added him on my credit cards for take that nigga off. I just did. I did because he maxed him out when I was in Aruba because he said he had no money. So I had to take him off my credit cards. Okay, hey, so I gotta be honest with you. <laughs> Read it down, little sis. Okay, Come so on. you know, um, like like my PR team, they hit up him for an interview, like when this first verse happened, yeah, God, right? God forbid. And guess what he said? What? He was like, I don't want to speak on anything, I'm healing. That's what he said. <laughs> Isn't uh-huh. that sweet? Girl, uh-huh. shut the fuck up. He's a narcissist. <laughs> <laughs> but he continued to like try to like have conversation and then we were just like you said no. <laughs> like Bye, Felicia, bitch. About. Don't nobody want you. Fuck out of here. Yeah, I don't. I wouldn't give him the platform. We don't need to um, normalize giving abusive men and and, and those, narcissists, uh, uh, huh? And narcissists. Yeah, narcissists platforms like to further spread their lies and be able to manipulate and abuse other women. Shout out Amber Rose because she's going through the same thing with her baby daddy AE. She's put him on, you know, said that he's a narcissist and these things, and now he's moved on to seventy-six-year-old share. And so, you know, we I'm don't sure want to, love. we don't want to keep giving these men these chances to redeem themselves when they're not worthy. Right. Especially in the guy put in position. Fuck him. Okay, you guys. So we coming towards the end of the pod. <laughs> we c- coming towards the end mm. of the podcast, but I like to end the podcast with a little game, and okay. it's called finish the lyrics. So I need everybody to pull their cup up. You fuck up a line on the lyrics. Do you even? I'm know gonna the lyrics? I, right because well, I'm gonna fuck up the line because I'm notorious for not knowing me, the lords. Girl, you, I know y'all don't know songs. Not like that. Okay, because I always do the same song every time and I always fuck it up. But since it's three of us, I feel like I can catch the third line. <laughs> oh, okay. All right. So everybody fill up their cup. Love Patron. Yeah, I'm not good at songs. I know the songs. group the group chatters are tied to me with this song because I do it every episode, <laughs> and I'm doing it so I can learn. Oh, God. So you can cheat. Bitch, I still, <laughs> I still don't know the words. She's so cute, Alex. She said, so you can cheat. Where are you from? You, Memphis. Memphis? Mm-hmm. And you down south. I hear it in you. <laughs> okay, already? Mm-hmm. Riding with my twin and them. And we all look good as fuck. You should know this part. <laughs> What song she is say it? She say she my op. I don't know. I, I had to look up. We not about to do Cardi B while I'm on this motherfucking set. Y'all beefing? <laughs> I didn't know. Look, I didn't know. I wasn't aware. Ooh, child. Oh yeah, y'all are. I forgot. You said she stole your birthday, the uh, the kids' birthday uh theme or something like that. We're just gonna say Hazel Lee came before Cardi B, and we'll leave it there. Um, what's another song that's yeah, uh, Let's do a different one. <laughs> um, I mean, but it was more so this Glorilla song Cardi yeah. B just featured. That was her verse, I think. Yeah, that was her verse. Okay. I love Glorilla, right, yeah, though. So. I like Glorilla, <laughs> too. Shout out to Glorilla. She from Memphis, too. Yeah, okay, period. I like her. Okay, so somebody else coming with a song. We got you I don't know. I don't know no rap. songs, girl. Bitch, yes, you do. Hazel. I don't know. Where my phone at? As much as you like to twerk, you don't know no songs. Girl, I don't listen to music like that. I listen to music all day and don't know no and don't know no no songs. I'm a Not TV even though like oh um. I'm a TV girl. Oh, I, I got some. I'm gonna sing some. Oh, that I'd be like whenever I be outside. <laughs> it's, I just um, gotta hear the song and it's then Jeezy, I, but I can't think of the words right I now. I definitely don't know no Jeezy. Y'all don't know Jeezy? I know Jeezy, but not the words. <laughs> <laughs> We are trash at this you song wanna game. You want to talk shit? You want to run your mouth? You want some gangster muff? We'll set this bitch off. Set this Not, bitch okay, off. What's, what's, you uh, know Boosie Girl. Come uh, on. Come on, Zero. We from Houston. I, I, I definitely, definitely don't know, know Zero. zero. <laughs> I'm dead. I'm done with that. I listen to her loss all day. If you give me a 21 Savage and a Drake bar, I might oh, be um, to on that bullshit. All of you hoes. Be careful who y'all Girl, talking to. Texas. I don't know. <laughs> Bitch, this was on her loss. He said, I got a dick for you if you ain't working, girl. And if I'm working, bitches, hell no. Look, I know I'm bullshit. That's what I'm Never mind. <laughs> okay, you guys, we are wrapped for the Hollywood Group <laughs> Chat podcast, period. Um, with our guest Hazel E and our co-host Alex, Alex Jackson. Jackson. They're going to look into their cameras and tell you where you can find them at. 
I'm Alex Jackson. You can find me on Instagram at Alex the Media Girl. Girl, what are you? No, that's right. The ghetto. <laughs> Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm that girl, Hazel E. Baby, and you can find me on all social media platforms, you know, because I got to like that, at <laughs> Hazel E. Baby. That's Twitter, that's Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, One Stop Shop. Come check me out. And you guys, it's Megan James, and this is the end of the episode for the Hollywood Group Chat podcast. But I think, but I do think Tori's doubt. gonna walk. I think he's gonna walk. He's gonna walk. Yeah. Because he's gonna walk. I think he's gonna walk or get a mistrial. A reasonable doubt. He's gonna walk because it has to be beyond a reasonable doubt, mm -hmm. and it's such a circus in that courtroom right mm -hmm. now Facts. that they're not gonna be able to like literally say one thousand percent without a doubt that he shot her. And so he's gonna probably walk because of, of Kelsey. The, because okay, of Kelsey. so since we just brought in Masika, I might as well just ask <laughs> some vibrators. I like the rose. Just saying. <laughs> Period. <laughs>